Hello everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple, ilovepathology.com. This is in continuation with the ovarian tumors series, which in this series we will be discussing about germ cell tumors. So if you recollect the classification which we had discussed in the earlier sessions, the ovarian tumors are classified into surface epithelial tumors, germ cell tumors, sex cord stromal tumors, metastatic tumors and miscellaneous tumors. In the last uh, few sessions, we had completely covered the surface epithelial tumors and in today's session, we will be discussing about germ cell tumors, the concepts behind understanding as to what the germ cell tumors are and then into various germ cell tumors. So, in the next 15 minutes or so, we will be looking into the general concepts of germ cells and why are these called germ cell tumors? We will look into the classification of germ cell tumors. Then in detail about you know the pathology, the morphological features of dysgerminoma, embryonal carcinoma, endodermal sinus tumor and choriocarcinoma. What is germ cell? As you all know, these are the specialized cells that give rise to gametes. This whole purpose of germ cells is reproductive in nature. You know, what are these germ cells? Oocytes and spermatocytes are germ cells in ovary and testis respectively okay and this oocyte after the meiotic division you know it gives rise to ova which is the gamete which we are talking about we told right germ cell is the cell which gives rise to gametes so oocyte is a germ cell and then that gives rise to ova which is a gamete similarly spermatocyte gives rise to spermatozoa right now you understood the concept of germ cells other than germ cells, we should know that there are somatic cells, which are the cells which forms the body's tissues and organs. Okay, Basically, these somatic cells are the ones which form the structure and function of the body. So, let us get back to the histological histology of ovary where you saw these are germ cells within these primordial follicle, primary follicle. So, the oocyte is there in the primordial follicle and then it undergoes meiotic division and finally forms the ova which is expelled out in the form of ovulation okay so that's the cycle of oocyte to ova okay germ cell to gamete we should also know that the germ cells are pluripotent in nature which means they have the potential to differentiate into various types of cells and tissues okay now in the process of cell division and differentiation into various types of cells and tissues, these cells can undergo mutations and can undergo dysregulation. So, and because of these mutations and dysregulations during the cell division and differentiation, this can lead to the development of different types of tumors. That is what we call as germ cell tumors. Now, we'll move on to understand the classification of germ cell tumors. The first and the most important, you know, germ cell tumor which should come in mind in the hierarchy of classification is dysgerminoma, which is the most primitive germ cell tumor. You know, why it is most primitive? Because this particular germ cell did not reach the potential for further differentiation. So, that means to say that in the early stage itself, these cells might have, you know, undergone, might have had mutations or dysregulation and then form the tumor. That's dysgerminoma. So, the next stage of pluripotent germ cells is conversion into totipotent germ cells. At this stage, if there is any mutation, then the tumor which is formed is embryonal carcinoma. Okay. Now, if these totipotent germ cells differentiate further, what, is, what do they differentiate? They can differentiate into two lines. One, embryonic structures. Another is extra embryonic structures. Now, what do you mean by embryonic structures? Which means these are the structures which forms the fetus. Ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm, neural tube, primitive streak, etc. So, the tumors arising okay, from these cells which gives rise to embryonic structures are teratomas. Okay? And these teratomas can be of different types, mature teratoma, immature teratoma and specialized teratoma. Now, we'll move on to understand what are these extra embryonic structures. These are the uh, tissues that develop outside of the embryo, which means we are talking about placenta, amnion, chorion, yolk sac, etc. Right? Now, if there is any mutation, 
no are uh, arising occurring in these particular cells and these can give rise to tumors called endodermal sinus tumor that's yolk sac tumor or chorio carcinoma remember this is not a gestational chorio carcinoma okay this is non gestational chorio carcinoma occurring in the ovary so sometimes it so happens that many of these germ cells can combine together and that's what we call it as mixed germ cell tumors now i hope you have understood the concepts of classification of germ cell tumors which is this germinoma which is the most primitive germ cell tumor then embryonal carcinoma which are the tumor of tumors of totipotent germ cells and then if it differentiates into embryonic and extra embryonic structures then it goes on to form teratomas and endodermal sinus tumor and chorio carcinoma respectively if there is a combination then we call it as mixed germ cell tumors let's understand each of these you know in detail i am not talking about teratomas now i'll be discussing all other germ cell tumors the first one is this germinoma which is the most common germ cell tumor of ovary which constitutes approximately around 50% of all malignant germ cell tumors and 1 to 2% of ovarian malignancies so you should know that the most common ovarian malignancy is the surface epithelial tumor right the carcinomas of ovary ovary serous carcinomas and mucinous carcinomas right now this germ cell tumor tumor this this germinoma constitutes around 1 to 2% of all ovarian malignancies and this is the ovarian counterpart of testicular seminoma 75% of this germinoma occurs in second and third decade of life and up to 15% of ovarian this germinoma is contain other malignant germ cell elements that's why i told you right mixture of other germ cell malignant germ cell elements leads to malignant mixed germ cell tumors now what are the risk factors for occurrence of this germinoma i told you this these are the most primitive you know germ cell tumors right so patients who are having gonadal dysgenesis including pseudo hermaphroditism they are at risk for development of these kind of tumors so if you do a molecular study in these tumors most often what it is found is that the chromosomal 12 abnormalities particularly isochromosome of the short arm of chromosome number 12 that's the most common see i mean kit mutation or amplification can be seen in some of these cases grossly they are unilateral in 80 to 90% of cases and these tumors are solid mass of variable sizes the external surface can be smooth or even bosselated okay so these are the beautiful illustrations or photographs from the tuli which you can find these on twitter or the platform x on cut surface you know the section is solid yellowish white to gray pink what you should note it note is that it's very soft and fleshy in appearance so lobulated mass fleshy cut surface is the characteristic feature of germ cell tumor so microscopically you know the cells of these germ cell tumors are arranged in sheets groups which are separated by a fibrous stroma okay so these are the cells which i was talking about okay and these cells are round to polygonal cells with a very large nuclei with a prominent nucleoli okay and these sheets of cells are separated by this fibrous fibrous stroma and note that this fibrous stroma is infiltrated by the lymphocytes all those small blue dots what you're seeing are lymphocytes sometimes you know you can find granulomatous reaction in the tumors that's an illustration of germ cell tumor large polygonal round cells centrally placed nuclei prominent nuclei the fibrous septa infiltrated by lymphocytes okay now if you do a histochemistry for these germ cell tumors these the cells are pas positive pyruvic acid shift positive because they contain abundant intracytoplasmic glycogen immuno histochemistry you know they are positive for plap sall4 oc4 and ckit okay if you remember i told you ckit kit mutations are common in this germinoma right so you find these features on immuno histochemistry you can also have serum markers sometimes you know these patients might have elevated serum lactate dehydrogenase some of these also produce elevated levels of chorionic gonadotrophin what is the prognosis of this germinoma if the tumor is unilateral as most often it is 
and it has not broken through the capsule or spread outside the ovary, then it has excellent prognosis, 96% cure rate with just simple salpingo ovorectomy. Remove the ovaries, remove the fallopian tube, and then you can be sure of around 96% cure rate. Okay, but if the tumor extends beyond the ovary, you no, know, still it is good because it responds to chemotherapy. So, the next important tumor is embryonal carcinoma. Okay, where did we land now? After the most primitive, we looked at the tumors of totipotent germ cells, right? What is embryonal carcinoma? These are very aggressive tumors, very rare in ovary, affects usually young females, and these are large fleshy tumors with large areas of necrosis and hemorrhage. You know, they are they contain very highly pleomorphic cells with large nuclei, vesicular chromatin, prominent nuclei, abnormal you know, uh, mitosis and all those things. All amounts of pleomorphism you can see in embryonal carcinomas. If you do an immunostic chemistry for embryonal carcinoma, you find similar markers just like you know dysgeminoma. Apart from that, you can also find cytokeratin being positive. The third important one is the yolk sac tumor. So, we talked about embryonal carcinoma which was the tumor of totipotent germ cells if you recollect the classification. Then moving on, if these differentiates into embryonal and extra embryonic tissues, we are looking at extra embryonic differentiation. One is yolk sac tumor, second most common malignant germ cell tumor after dysgeminoma. Next most common malignant germ cell tumor is yolk sac tumor. As we, as I told you, they are derived from malignant germ cells that are differentiating along the extra embryonic yolk sac lineage. And these tumors, you know, they elaborate alpha fetoprotein just like the normal yolk sac. And they typically occur in children, adolescents and young adults. Okay, grossly they are unilateral, they can, they are most often solid, can be cystic, you know, with a fleshy and if solid, they have a very fleshy cut surface. Hemorrhage and necrosis can be seen in endodermal sinus tumors. Microscopically, there are lots of patterns which can occur in the same tumor, okay. So, different patterns can coexist in the same tumor and what are those patterns? These patterns can be reticular pattern. Microcystic pattern, pseudopapillary pattern, polyvesicular pattern, hepatoid and solid patterns. Now, what is this reticular pattern? This means they have a poorly formed network of, you know, a network of channels. Now, these, this is a network of, poorly formed network of channels forming a reticular pattern. And then you have a microcystic pattern and these poorly formed channels, you know, they coils with small cystic spaces and that's why it's called microcystic pattern. A third one is a pseudopapillary pattern where you find, you know, papillae, papillary structures, you know, into a cystic space. That's a pseudopapillary pattern. Fourth one is a polyvesicular pattern where you find multiple cysts lined by columnar cells. That's polyvesicular pattern. Hepatoid pattern, the cells resemble that of hepatocytes and the solid pattern is what you see is sheets and sheets of pleomorphic cells. Okay, you, you don't have to remember all these patterns. If you remember one thing in yolk sac tumor, that's Schiller dual body, that's more than enough. What are these Schiller dual bodies? We'll look into it in detail a bit later. Apart from Schiller dual bodies, you also find hyaline bodies which are extracellular and intracellular hyaline-like material, okay? Now, we will look into Schiller dual bodies. These are the papillary structure within a fibrovascular core, right? They are named after Walter Schiller, who was an American pathologist, and then Dual, who was a French professor of anatomy and histology, Dr. Schiller and Dr. Dual. So, that's a, a you know, a graphic representation of Schiller dual body where you find a single capillary or a medium sized blood vessel in the center of the Schiller dual body. And this is surrounded by a fibrous core lined by columnar tumor cells. Okay, that's a papillary into a cystic space, right? So, and this space is lined by flattened epithelial cells. Okay, so that's how a Schiller dual body looks. That's, uh, uh, no, Schiller dual body on histopathological examination of one of the yolk sac tumor. So that's a capillary, thin wall capillary with RBCs inside, and that's a papillary which is lined by tumor cells, and that's the space. 
another shiller dual body here look at that the central vascular core surrounded by tumor cells and that is seen within a cystic space so these are very classical of uh, yolk sac tumors or endodermal sinus tumors histochemically these tumors also are pas positive particularly those hyaline bodies it's not the cells which are pas positive like in dysdeminoma here it's hyaline bodies which are pas positive immunohistochemically they are they stain cytokeratin and alpha fetoprotein okay now what is the prognosis with chemotherapy and surgery more than 80% survival irrespective or independent of the deceased stage right now last germ cell tumor for today's session is choriocarcinoma ovary i say ovary because these are not gestational choriocarcinoma when we say choriocarcinoma most of the times we think it's choriocarcinoma arising within the uterus as gestational choriocarcinomas these are not gestational these are pure choriocarcinoma occurring in the ovary because these are malignant germ cell tumors that exhibit extra embryonic differentiation usually they coexist with other germ cell tumors most often they are found in children and adolescents around 20 years of age group these are the tumors which are rapidly growing mass often with present often with torsion rupture and hemoperitoneum you know they are very very aggressive tumors these patients have elevated levels of serum beta hcg they often metastasize sometimes patients presents with uh, the initial presentation of these patients will be the metastatic I mean, symptoms due to metastasis like you know if they have um, deposits in brain you can have headaches and seizures grossly these are unilateral very large cystic and very large usually solid and not cystic they often have extensive areas of hemorrhage and necrosis and microscopically what you see is highly pleomorphic cells just like embryonal carcinoma these also have very highly pleomorphic cells but these are sensitotrophoblasts admixed with cytotrophoblasts right hemorrhage and necrosis is extremely common in choriocarcinomas and as i told you they uh, they usually would have metastasized into the lungs liver bone and other organs at the time of diagnosis itself and these are the tumors which are generally not responsive to chemotherapy and that's why these core carcinomas of ovary are extremely fatal so that's all for today's session we uh, talked about the general concepts of germ cells we looked into the classification of germ cell tumor and then in detail our morphological features of dysdeminoma endodermal carcinoma endodermal sinus tumor and choreo carcinoma in the next session we will look into the germ cell tumor which differentiates along the embryonic structures we talk we talk everything about teratomas if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment you know because your comments are the ones which motivates me you know to create more and more videos don't forget to subscribe if you are happy about the content what i am creating and then do share if you find this content useful thank you